We've got a fun exercise today. We'll be proving that the sequence a n equals negative 1 to the power of n, this is the sequence of positive integer powers of negative 1, we want to prove that this sequence diverges. This is our first example of a sequence that diverges, but not to positive or negative infinity, which is what makes it a particularly fun exercise. Before we get into the proof, let's quickly think a little bit about why we would think in the first place that this sequence diverges. What are the terms of this sequence negative 1 to the power of n? Well, negative 1 to the power of 1, the first term of the sequence, is negative 1. Negative 1 to the power of 2 is positive 1. Negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1, and so on. For odd values of n, negative 1 to the n is going to be negative 1. For even values of n, negative 1 to the power of n is going to be positive 1. So we might ask, does this sequence converge? Well, remember what a convergent sequence is, and I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on the topic if you need to review. Basically, for a sequence to converge means that it's getting arbitrarily close to some real number, called the limit. So is this sequence getting arbitrarily close to some real number? Well, it's certainly not converging to negative 1, for example, because half of the terms, all of the ones in even positions, are two units away from negative 1. By the same logic, it's certainly not converging to positive 1, because half of the terms are two units away from positive 1. What about 0? Zero? 0's halfway between 1 and negative 1. Does this sequence converge to 0? Well, definitely not, because all the terms of this sequence are one unit away from 0. So it's definitely not getting arbitrarily close to 0. So we may say, okay, seems like this sequence is definitely a divergent sequence. So does it diverge to positive infinity, or negative infinity, or neither? Well, it certainly can't diverge to positive or negative infinity because the sequence never gets further than one unit from zero. So indeed, we suspect this is a divergent sequence that doesn't diverge to positive or negative infinity. Then how do we prove that this sequence diverges? Well, there's no special definition for diverging to positive or negative infinity that we're gonna use in this proof. Remember, for a sequence to diverge, just means that it doesn't converge to any real number. Diverging to positive or negative infinity are special types of divergence, but we're not going to be able to prove that this sequence fits either of those types of divergence because it doesn't. So that just leaves us with the basic definition of a divergent sequence, a sequence that doesn't converge to any real number. So we need to show for any real number, this sequence doesn't converge to it. That's how we prove it diverges. You may think a useful way to go about that to kind of get a foothold on the numbers we're working with is to assume for the sake of contradiction that this sequence does converge to some real number, say L. Then we can use the properties of convergence to demonstrate a contradiction, showing that in fact the sequence can't converge to any real number. So we'll suppose for contradiction that our sequence does in fact converge. So we say SFC, suppose for contradiction, there exists some real number L that our sequence AN converges to. That means, by definition of convergence, that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists some natural number, big N, so that every term of our sequence after the big nth term, for every n greater than or equal to big N, the terms of our sequence AN are within epsilon of that limit L. Hopefully writing this out gives you some idea of what the problem is going to be. No matter what big N is, the terms of our sequence after the big nth term will be alternating 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and so on. So this definition of convergence is forcing our limit to be within arbitrarily small distances of both positive 1 and negative 1 because this 
the terms of our sequence a n will be alternating between one and negative one, that's gonna be a problem. Quickly, let's take a look at a picture that will show us just what this problem is. Here's a picture with a number line that will help us see exactly what the problem is. We know this must be true for every epsilon greater than zero. So of course, it's true for an epsilon value of say one half. Since we're assuming our sequence converges to some real number L, by definition of convergence, the terms of our sequence must eventually get and stay within one half of the limit. The distance between the terms of our sequence and the limit must eventually get less than one half because one half is a perfectly valid value for epsilon. The terms of our sequence though, no matter how far you go in the sequence, are just alternating between negative one and positive one. So this means the distance between negative one and the limit L must be less than one half and the distance between positive one and the limit L must be less than one half. Since these are the two values, negative one and positive one, that our sequence is taking on. These restrictions are represented here with this number line. The limit L must exist within this sort of circle, this range on the number line between negative three halves which is one half away from negative one and negative one half, which is one half more than negative one. So it must be within this range. That's a one half distance from negative one. However, by the same logic, the limit L must also be between one half less than one and one half greater than one. So it must exist within this range between one half and three halves. This of course is not possible because these two ranges, these two intervals, don't have any numbers in common. The limit L can't be in here and in here. It's just a single number. And so that's the basic idea of how we're going to get our contradiction. Since by definition of convergence, this must hold for every epsilon greater than zero, we're just finding an epsilon that forces a contradiction. So let's go ahead and finish writing out the proof. We'll set epsilon equal to one half and show that this forces a contradiction. So we can say let epsilon equal one half, then we can consider the two possibilities. The terms of our sequence are either negative one or positive one. So let's address those possibilities and see what happens. If n, the power that negative one is being raised to, is odd, so I'll just write if n odd, then what do we know? Well, the distance between the terms a n inner sequence and the limit L, we know that this must be less than our epsilon value of one half, since we're assuming the sequence converges to this limit of L. However, a n, the terms of our sequence, of course, can be replaced by negative one, because when n is odd, a n is negative negative one to an odd power, which is negative one. Thus, negative one minus the limit L is less than one half. This is equivalent to another inequality, this one in particular, that negative one half is less than, and then we can drop the absolute value bars, is less than negative one minus L, which is less than one half. If you're not familiar with the equivalence of this inequality to this one, I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that it's very important, so make sure you're familiar with it. We'll use it a lot. Then we might wanna get rid of these negatives here so we could multiply through by negative one, which would give us that one half is greater than one plus L, which is greater than negative one half. And then to get L by itself, we could subtract one from all parts of the inequality, leaving us with negative one half is greater than our limit L, which is greater than negative three halves. So L must be between negative three halves and negative one half, which was represented by this part of the picture. Then we can see what happens if n is even, that's of course going to force L to be in here, which will be our contradiction. All right, so if n is even, then again, the distance between a n and its limit, the absolute value of a n minus L, must be less than one half, since we're assuming our sequence converges to L. Now, if n is even, 
a n is negative one to an even power, which is positive one. So this would mean the absolute value of one half, or excuse me, the absolute value of one minus L is less than one half. Again, we can write this as an equivalent inequality that negative one half is less than one minus L, which is less than one. Half. Now we might want our limit L to be positive, so again we'll multiply across by negative 1, giving us that 1 half is greater than, remember we've got to flip the inequalities when we multiply by a negative, is greater than negative 1 plus L is greater than negative 1 half. Then we just add the 1 through the inequality to get L by itself giving us that three halves is greater than our limit L, which is greater than one half. And here, my friends, we see the contradiction and we are done. This restriction, of course, implies that our limit L is negative. This restriction implies that our limit L is positive. That is impossible. So in fact, our sequence AN cannot converge to any real number L, so by definition, it diverges. So once more, to prove the sequence AN equals negative one to the power of N diverges, we prove that it can't converge to any real number. We do that by supposing for the sake of contradiction that it does converge to some real number. And then we showed that, that forced an impossible condition on that supposed limit L, that it's both negative and positive. To clear up one little detail here, you might wonder why there was no consideration of the big N value in this part of the proof, because remember, we are only guaranteed that this inequality is true, that the terms of our sequence are within one half of the limit. For terms a n, where n is at least as big as big N. But this really didn't matter for this proof, because no matter what big N is, the terms of our sequence after the big nth term are either going to have an odd n and thus be equal to negative 1, or an even n and thus be equal to positive 1. So the big N doesn't really matter here. And that's it. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove that negative one to the n is a divergent sequence, even though it doesn't diverge to positive or negative infinity. Pretty cool. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the jolliest math lessons on the internet.